Alrighty guys, let's get into box plots. I'm gonna close myself out. And we're gonna get right into it. Alright, so box plots. We've got um, you'll be able to represent real world data with plots on the real number line using box plots. The learning targets here is to be able to represent real world data with plots on the real number line using box plots. So First, I want to just go over one more time dot plots and histograms. We're not going to draw any, but we're going to just make some comparisons. So for question one here, we have a list of different um, pieces of data and what type of um, representation would work better, dot plot or histogram. So the first one is the daily temperatures for Albany, New York over a year. Now, because a year is a longer period of time, and dot plots, you have to sit there and plot all the dots. A histogram is better for that piece of data. All right, daily temperatures for Albany, New York over a month. Because it's a little bit smaller piece of data, we're going to do dot plots. And then the results of rolling two dice within a game. So that is going to be dot plots as well. And then heights of high school football players statewide. So that's a whole bunch of football players because it's a whole state. That's going to be a histogram. And then finishing times of 125 randomly selected athletes for a 100 meter race. That's going to be a histogram. Now I'm like freaking out because I think I said dot plot for the last one, but it's histogram. Anyways, all the answers are there. <laughs> All right, so what data sets are better for dot plots and what data sets are better for histograms? Explain your reasoning. So this kind of has a lot of info there, but we kind of just, I, not kind of, we discussed this last week in our videos. Um, histograms are better for bigger sets of data and continuous pieces of data like heights or um, time, any sort of time keeping thing. And then dot plots are better for smaller sets of data and things that are more countable. So the number of people that like chocolate ice cream, vanilla ice cream, and strawberry ice cream, things like that. All right, so just, that was just our little recap. And we're gonna go in into our box plot info here. So you might be wondering what the heck's a box plot. A box plot displays a five number summary for a data set. The five number summary of a data set consists of the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and maximum values. What is a quartile? A quartile is 25% of the data. Quart, the quarter. Uh, the special note here is discussing the difference between finding a dot plot, uh, box plot for an even number of data values and an odd number of data values. Well, with even numbers of data values, you're going to have to find the median or average of the first quartile, the median, and the third quartile because it there won't be a number exactly in that spot. For odd numbers of data, you'll, you'll have numbers from your data set that give you that quarter one, the median, and the quarter three. But for um, even sets, you have to take the median of those two numbers right above and below um, each quarter. And you'll see in our next set of data what I mean by that. So our first example we have here, we have the number of runs scored by a softball team in 20 games. So this is an even set of data. Um, your data is given to you randomly. Now, sometimes it's given to you randomly. Sometimes it's given to you in, in order from least to greatest. Now, the only way we can really find a box plot or create a box plot is by by putting our numbers from least to greatest. Now, for our minimum and our maximum, pretty straightforward. The smallest number and the biggest number. Okay. The median, if you remember when you were in like elementary and middle school and you learned about mean, median, and mode, the thing you would do to find your median was cross off one at a time on both ends till you got to the middle. Now, they already did it for us here, and you see how there's not a number in between. Well, to find the number in between here, you take seven and eight, you add them together, and since it's two pieces of data, you divide by two. So seven plus eight is 
15, and 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. So you're going to use that same idea with the quarter 1 and the quarter 3. So you take the first half of the data, and you get to the median of that first half of the data, the middle, that quarter 1 piece. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. All right, then you go to the upper half of the data. So between 8 and 14, your median of that piece of the data is 10 and 10. 10 plus 10 is 20. 20 divided by 2 is 10. So that is all the information you need for your box plot. So the reason why they call it a box plot is because from the first quartile to the third quartile, they frame it as a box and then they have the median wherever it lies within that rectangle or box. And your minimum, your minimum your minimum and your maximum. Pretty straightforward. I'm gonna leave this here for a second just so you can see it, take it in. And then we're gonna go ahead now. And this is still example one, so I don't wanna change the whole page, but I moved the box plot that was created up to the top, and we're gonna run through the different pieces of information we got from the box plot. So, you find that the softball team scored more than seven and a seven and five tenths runs in 50% of the games. So you know that because seven and a half was the median. Well, median is half, middle, and if you're looking at 100% of the data, well, half of that is 50. So they scored more than seven and a half in 50% of the games and less than seven and a half in the other 50% of the games. Alrighty, then we have half of the data values are between 4 and 10 runs. Well, that's because it's the first to the third quartile. If we look back at this piece, the first and the third quartile, you see that that's half of these pieces here. That's four boxes, and there's eight boxes in total. So half of four is eight. Well, from quarter one to quarter three is 10 pieces of data. Well... Um, half of 20 is 10. The other, and you could do this for a bunch of different parts of the data, but you can also say that between 2 and 7.5. So 2 is the beginning of the first quartile, and 7.5 is the median. Okay, 7.5 and 14. That's the second half of the data. All right, the most runs scored in a game was 14, and the few scored was 7. That's the minimum and the maximum. In their worst 25% of the game, so that's that first quartile, the team scored at most 4 runs. Okay? In their best 25 of the games, they scored between 10 and 14. And then we have this new phrase here, interquartile range. The interquartile range is the difference between your third quartile and your first quartile. So 10 minus 4, and that gives you 6. All right, I've got one more example here. We have our data, and the first thing you want to do with your data is if it's not already in least to greatest, put it in least to greatest. All right, so least to greatest here, minimum, maximum, median. Now this is an odd set of data. There's an odd number of data in this. So we can easily point out that median, the quarter one value, and the quarter three value because there's no, no, there, we don't have to average anything this time around. So this is the median, all right, and the first quartile is the median of that lower set, and the third quartile is the median of that higher set. All right, and then the inner quartile, well, our quarter three value was 73, our quarter one value was 65, so you take the difference and that is eight. And then we can check the box plot, we have our mean, our, why do I keep on saying minimum? Our minimum, our maximum, quarter one, quarter three, and our median. Alrighty. Go ahead and pause. You could look at the notes to see practice one and practice two. Alrighty, pause or didn't pause. 
Let's move along. All right, so you got Mrs. Bridgewater recorded the number of Snapchats 10 different students sent in one day and constructed the box plot below for the data. Use the following vocabulary to label the box plot. You will not use all of the words on the plot. Well, let's just go from left to right. The part here is the minimum, F. The start of the box is the first quartile, B. Whatever line is in the box is your median, E. The other end of the box is the third quartile, G. The end of the box plot is the maximum, C. All right, the 50th percentile of the data set is 12 snaps. So 12 right here is the median, that's 50%, that's right in the middle. Half of the data values are between 2 and 20, 8 and 12, 8 and 14, 10 and 12. Well, let's look back. Remember, the half can be determined between the first quartile and the third quartile. So we got 8 and 14. Oh, there we go. 75% of the students send 12, 13, 14, 15, or fewer Snapchats per day. Well, 75 would be the third quartile. So the third quartile is 14, so 14 or less. All right, practice number two here. Remember, the first thing you do with your data for your box plots is put it from least to greatest. Then everything else comes pretty easy. So you've got your minimum, your maximum. For this one, it's an even set of data. So to get your median, you have to take the average of those two numbers in the middle. To get your quarter one data, you got to get the two averages of the middle of the first half of the data. To get your higher piece, you take the average of the two middle numbers in the upper half of your data. All right, so quarter three was 48, quarter one was 43. To get your interquartile range, you find the difference of those two, and that's five. Then you're able to create your box plot. 41's your minimum, 43's your quarter one value, 44's your median, 48's your quarter three, and 50 is your maximum. All right, so the next thing you want to do is go ahead and watch the other link I have for the next video. It's comparing dot plots, histograms, box plots video. That video is not me. It's a Khan Academy video. If you need extra help with that, you can just email me and I'll send you extra videos or some other explanations if necessary. What you want to do after that video is the Nearpod. The Nearpod will be available on Tuesday, May 12th, and you have until Saturday, May 16th to complete it. And we have the quiz. I will be posting the quiz on Wednesday, May 13th. You will have until Sunday, May 17th to complete it. The access code for that quiz is week 7 week seven um your bonus question for this week's quiz is wait oh. where was miss quintero sitting for this week's video in her living room that's your question this is the bonus question for this week. All right, guys. Um, have fun with week seven. We're very close to the end of the school year, so um, please stay on top of your stuff. I know I've extended um, assignments till um, the 22nd. If I have to change it, I'm going to have to change it, and I'll deal with that if, it, if I have to deal with that. Um, but as of right now, I've extended it. If you need extra help, extra time, whatever it might be, please reach out to me, let me know. Um, have your parent reach out to me to let me know um, what the situation is. Um, all right, bye.